Hello there. If you're cold, you can get sick. Everybody knows this. In the UK, a social initiative is enabling people on a tight budget to turn up the heat without the fear of the cost. After a mild few weeks, the UK has gotten cold again. In Gloucester, a small town in western England, the temperature has dropped to minus 3 degrees overnight and it will remain chilly for a few more days. It also means the 7Y Energy Agency's phone will start ringing again. It always does when it gets cold. Even before the recent cold snap, the Welfare Foundation had far more to do than in previous winters. The number of people calling us has increased dramatically, was said by Sophie Wooden Lee. She is um, an employee of 7Y and uh, speaks via Zoom from her office in the Gloucester suburb to German media. A lot of people are really at the limit and we see how worried and anxious many are because they have absolutely no control over what is happening, she said. The energy crisis has hit the UK with full force. According to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, nowhere in Western Europe are the consequences of rising electricity and gas prices more serious than there. And this winter, UK household energy bills are twice as high as last year. The government has limited the maximum amount that a household must pay per year to £2,500. But that's still far more than many people can afford. According to a study, more than 3 million people were left without electricity and gas in their homes last year because they ran out of money. Across the country, local authorities and foundations have set up so-called warm banks, warm rooms in, in public buildings where freezing citizens can warm up. The 7Y Energy Agency is one of countless foundations and organizations that support people in need, which advise and often even money. This winter, they started a new project, Heat on Doctor's Prescription. It is aimed at people who are particularly at risk, that means those who need warm housing for health reasons. Around 10,000 people die every year in the UK from living in cold homes, according to National Energy Action, which fights energy poverty. Wooten Lee explains how warm home prescription works. If a GP determines during a routine checkup that a patient is eligible for a warm home prescription, he or she sends a letter to 7Y. Those affected often suffer from respiratory or heart diseases, asthma or arthritis, and have little money, making it difficult for them to pay their energy bills. 7Y's experts visit patients, look at energy bills, assess housing conditions, and decide how much money to give. We can cover the electricity and gas bills for up to four months, says Wooten Lee. The money comes from the state's Household Support Fund, which is distributed through local authorities. A first pilot project was launched last winter, when 28 people in Gloucester and the surrounding area took part. This year we have about twice as much money available. We hope to be able to help about 60 households this winter, says Wooten Lee. She is already convinced that the project will be a complete success. The affected households tell us that it has changed their lives, she says. It tells the, she tells the story of a man who suffers from chronic lung disease and has to go to a clinic in cold weather. Last winter was the first he wasn't in hospital, says Wooten Lee. He owes this above all to the fact that he could leave the heating on as long as it was necessary, without fear of running out of money. And Wooten Lee hopes the heat recipe or heat prescription program will soon expand to other regions of the country. Pilot projects are currently underway in northeast England and in Aberdeenshire in Scotland. Wooten Lee not only points to the personal benefit of the patient, but also to the long-term effect. The long-term savings are enormous because patients with respiratory problems do not have to be treated in hospital, she says. Each year, the NHS spends an estimated £1.3 billion to treat illnesses caused or aggravated by cold and damp homes. But still, the heat, heating prescription merely eliminates the symptoms. In the long run, a permanent solution is needed, and Wooden Lee knows that too. Experts believe that one of the best ways to reduce energy bills 
is to better insulate homes to reduce energy leakage. The UK housing stock is old and inefficient and that exacerbates all the problems, says Wooden Lee. And statistics prove that. British houses are significantly older than the Western European average. 38% of houses were built before 1946, in Germany it's only 24%. As a result, more energy is wasted in UK buildings. Researchers examining 80,000 houses in 11 Western and Northern European countries a few years ago concluded that British buildings leak more than any other. While the temperature in a German house fell by one degree over a five-hour period, it did three degrees in Britain, and that's a huge waste of energy. In November, the UK government announced a home insulation subsidy scheme. However, it's quite modest. Within three years, around 70,000 buildings are to be renovated in terms of energy efficiency, of an estimated 26 million that have to be equipped with thermal insulation. Heat money prescriptions should therefore continue to be necessary in the coming years. Energy prices are unlikely to fall sharply again anytime soon. This week, Anders Opedal, head of Norwegian energy giant Equinor, warned that gas and electricity bills are unlikely to return to the pre-COVID levels. And that is probably what we all have to expect. And um, the insulation part is the, really the important one. I have to repeat that 70,000 out of 26 million. That's not going to work. And I'll see you in my next video. I'll be back.